Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer, and today you can think of it as part two of new developments in that submarine accident that took place off of the island of Hainan in South China Sea. To to tell us all about it and more, we have with us our expert guest Elmer Yuan. Elmer, Namaskar, and welcome to P Guru's channel. Uh, I like to talk about the development, the continuation of what happened to the accident uh, of the new uh, U.S. Connecticut, U.S.S. Connecticut, uh, out, out uh, outside the um, outside the um, uh, Hainan Island. Uh, as we know, right now the Connecticut is uh, really parked, docked in uh, Guam, and uh, it, the damage is under 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 the, the, the submarine, not right. above or side. Right. So what happened in the last two days, there's a development. There's a Chinese nuclear submarine sailing through the Taiwan Strait. And they service, they service, meaning that they had uh, they also have some trouble. They also have some trouble. And it's on its way to Hulu Island, which is the northeast of China. There's an island near North Vietnam. Uh, no, North Korea, where they do all the repairs. Uh, Hainan does not have really very deep repair. They have maintenance, but they really don't have repair. And uh, this submarine, this Chinese submarine called 094, was photographed by satellite and by US uh, surveillance plane P8. P8 is one of their very advanced. I mean, they were flying over the Taiwan Strait and spotted the, the submarine where from coming out of the water and and still on the Chinese side, on the mainland side, going towards northwards through the Taiwan Strait to get service. So it's obvious there was a collision. Um, there was a collision, and uh, and uh, both both submarine got hurt. And which was the time, other submarine? Which was the other submarine? Oh, it's the Connecticut. Oh, I see. So, so now the but how did they establish that? Uh, the uh, normally a uh, uh, nuclear submarine they never service, but obviously that has been damaged. Both are nuclear, but both submarines are nuclear. They've been damaged, so they had to service and then go all the way to Hulu Island. So, uh, normal maintenance is done in Hainan Island. They have a base. But all the high tech maintenance or repair is normally done uh, in uh, Dalian or in Hulu Island. That's where the uh, the the other nuclear submarine base is. So we believe, of course, and there's no proof. Nobody will tell any proof that this is no coincidence, and it's definitely uh, there was support. There was an accident, and uh, the dates coincide. And U.S. also reported the sighting of the submarine. So really, uh, uh, what I want to tell the audience is the conventional warfare is changing from on the water to under the water. On the water, to be honest, is really a sitting duck. All, all ships, you cannot move very fast. And if they really rain a lot of missiles on you, there's no way to defend, right? If they have enough missiles, just to right. you know, and not even missiles, they can even from the land, if you are near Taiwan Strait, they can just keep on sending it from even even uh, heavy, heavy weapon, heavy shelling can cause damage. So the future of ocean, the Navy warfare is really underwater. And as we can see, you remember, there was a uh, agreement The the originally Australia ordered uh, eight or nine submarines from France. And then they have to cancel their order and then switch to US and UK. That's why they call it Oscars, right? The three yeah, countries. Yeah, August, right, right. Yeah, August, right. August. So what happened is Australia, it's very expensive, is uh, building with the help of UK and US, building eight or nine nuclear submarines. And the, the thing is, because China also is building more, nuclear submarines so you have to really you, you keep your first island chain that's very essential and the latest 
is Taiwan is also going to build eight or nine. All right. And this time, as you know, last time France was very angry because they took away the business. So this time it involves seven countries, all supplying parts and technology to Taiwan to help them to build their nuclear submarine fleet. They had a they had a few. The Taiwanese have a few. Also, I think built by the French. All right. And uh, but that's you know today you have to have nuclear in order to stay underwater as long as possible. Yes. So yes. so Taiwan is definitely going to that. And you saw there were two visits from U.S. Congress representative or, or you know or congressman visiting Taiwan. What's happening? It costs so much money. U.S. is willing to extend credit. It's like, a, you know, it's similar to the Second World War. U.S. actually supply most of the weapon to the Russia, to the USSR, through the North. And they call leasing. They call leasing. But this time, Taiwan is probably buying. They can't afford so much. Taiwan has, Taiwan has a very small defense budget, like under 2%. And with the enemy like China, mainland, they have to, you have to, the Congress will have to approve the budget and give them the uh, financing to right. build the nuclear submarine. And that's not the end of it. So what's going to, what we're going to see, Japan also need to build a nuclear submarine, all right? So it, the war is going underwater. And I always, always, because, <laughs> I mean, you are in India, and we should really talk about India. Your submarines are very weak. I mean, you use some French, I don't know whether you use anything Russian, but they are very, even either one, they are way there behind the U.S. There is a bit of Russian also, but again, yes. like I think India is also scrambling right now from the looks of it. Yes, I think uh, I wouldn't be surprised if negotiation is underway to also to uh, for U.S. to supply submarine technology or some kind of similar deal as Australia or as Japan or as Taiwan. Taiwan. So I believe this is a very serious matter because in the future warfare, I mean, underwater, hidden, and then, uh, you know, like Taiwan, if they have submarine, there's no way the mainland can cross the Taiwan Strait and try to uh, try to land in, in Taiwan. They can really protect themselves much better. And you cannot occupy Taiwan by air alone. So Taiwan is in pretty good shape now. So this is why I want to answer your question uh, before the show, that the weakness right now for China to break out is uh, India. I mean, it, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but relatively, it's easier than the Pacific Front. The Pacific Front is very, very strongly fortified, as you know. Almost every month or every few weeks, two weeks, they have some kind of navy exercise, and this time involved with lots of countries. And, uh, and you see this, they have a cooperation between the Russian and Chinese. They consider more or less like a cooperation. It's not an alliance. So what the Russian are fortifying the border with the Ukraine, it looks like, you know, they consider the scale, not on one or two front, as an overall. If they make some trouble in Ukraine and also in India, then U.S. Didn't ha wouldn't know how to react because there are too many fronts. That Correct. is really a problem. You know, if I always say, if they move, they're not gonna move one. They're gonna move all in the same direction. They have enough capability to fight several fronts. And if they, do, of course they choose the weakest front. Ukraine is very weak. India compared to uh, Taiwan is not so fortified as Taiwan. So as a result, I think your, uh, your country I mean, everybody likes to think, oh, it's not going to happen to me. <laughs> it's always happening to the other guys. It's, we, we need to be very careful. And, uh, and, and they have some very aggressive plan. Xi Jinping right now, he needs to do something. Because under his uh, last nine years, no accomplishment, zero accomplishment uh, economically in anything or system-wise in China, zero accomplishment. The economy is going to help. Right, huge inflation, huge unemployment. He just shut down uh, Macau, which is really a, a very important part. Uh, of course, when you say uh, shut down, what do you mean? The, <laughs> no you more gambling. About, yeah, do you know much about gambling? Yes. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm machines, about, black no, 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 those are not gambling. You know, people like us going to Vegas, all right? And we right. we, we, we probably uh, maybe $500 at the most, we gamble $1,000, we lose and then we leave, all right? right? That money is not enough to pay for the lights. Right. <laughs> that, the real way of gambling, let me tell you how Macau works. Macau is six times bigger than Vegas in terms mm. of uh, 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 you know, gambling, uh, gaming, in gaming uh, uh, quality. This is how it works. You know, they find some rich people. If they find a guy, let's say he's worth $10 million, right? So he will give him a credit for $1 million. And credit is not in cash, in chips, all right? So you, I give you $1 million chips, $1 million chips, and you can gamble. And on top of that, I give you 20% uh, uh, surplus. So you get mm. 120 instead of 100, right? And then all the whining and the dining is free, hotel is free, airplane is free. You are treated like the VIP. And there are VIP rooms. That's not where we go. You know, we go to the big hall, right? Big, right, big right, room. Right. And then we, 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 there's VIP room. And normally a person like you and me or anybody, after they, if they have to reach for their wallet and come up with 500 to 1,000, if you lose that, you already do stop, all right? Right. You have control. But when people give you a million dollar credit or $1.2 million credit and give you all the whining and dining, you want to look like a big shot. You right. understand? You walk in and then everybody calling you this name, Mr. This and Mr. That. So you'll be gambling, not 500 to 1,000. Each time you'll be gambling 5,000 at a time, 10,000 at a time. All right. right. And everybody end up losing. If you gamble a long time, the odds are against you. you they are you know, losing. And then because you have $10 million uh, asset, it's not so hard to, to, to keep nagging you and get you to pay off your gambling debt, that one million. Right. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. So right now, they just arrested the person, the person, they need a person, the casino to not do it themselves. They have an agent. And this agent account for half of that business, we call the VIP room business. He has a book of 80,000 customers in China. Half of them are officials, right? Mm. Corrupt officials. Half of them are businessmen, mm. right? Every one of them is over a million dollar credit. That's how they bring customers, right? This is a layer we don't know. We normal people don't see, but right. this is how it's done. And we are talking about six times, and they are draining, literally, every month, almost a trillion dollars, of from 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 China, right? And they chase and this and they work, and they use also use that channel for laundering money. Siri, you understand? So it's very easy for 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 corrupted money. They say uh, they pretend to gamble in in in, in Macau. All right, and then that money can, from Chinese money, from RMB can become Macau dollars, which is a foreign currency, which is a hot currency, and you can go to Hong Kong dollars or US dollars. And let me tell you, uh, what it, it used to be. I know some officials. All right, they stole the money from the state. All right, from the province or from the state. Go to Macau. Let's say ten million, ten million dollars, and then they have an arrangement with the casino. Oh, and there was their camera, right? You, when you're gambling, a camera. And he lost it all. And then he would cry and then repent and admit his guilt when he goes back to China. They'll give him, let's say, two, three years of imprisonment. After he finished that, he goes back to Taiwan, goes back to Macau, and take 80% of what he lost in cash, right? It's all arranged. It's all arranged under camera. So there's plenty of, and then he took that money and then migrate to the United States of America. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and he's clean. He has served his term, right? Everything clean. He come here and those people, there are many of such people here around in California. And you don't see them change their name. They do a plastic surgery. You don't recognize them anymore. It's a very common thing to do. So and this is, and Xi Jinping decided to do away with it. He arrested the guy who has account for half, and he's going to stop more of that. First, he's short of money. 
Secondly, he he is basically he said gambling is wrong, so there's no future in Macau. He is what he's practicing. Xi Jinping is practicing. It's like Puritan. You understand Puritan communism, meaning mm. you have to dedicate everything to the state. You're not right. supposed to do these so-called corrupted or, or bourgeois bourgeois uh, crime, uh, bourgeois corruption. So this is what's happening. Macau is wiped out, and Hong Kong soon already we're we're losing money like crazy and right, hong kong money is training people are moving to uk he is going to turn china into a very very simple uh proletarian proletarian so houses um, houses are not for speculation property are not for speculation and money are not for gambling <laughs> money is for spending Going back to Puritan, so of course the whole economy is collapsing in China. Export is down, power stop all the time. Just coal prices have gone up several times. Uh, natural gas and the biggest problem, Siri, uh, that I recognize is fertilizer. China mm. is the biggest supply in the world for fertilizer. Even in the states, many people. I just came from my farm. Farm, you know, many. Uh, and they said there's a fertilizer shortage. Fertilizer prices have gone up. You have to use, uh, I think, potassium and also natural gas, mm. all right, to produce uh, produce um, uh, uh, produce a fertilizer. And natural price have gone up so much. And the Chinese control the communists control the price of the fertilizer because it affects the farm product price. So what are they what they're doing is they stop. Stop! Stop making enough fertilizers. They cut back their production because the more you produce, the more money you lose. This has a global effect because fertilizer is to produce your food chain, your grain, and then even the animal feeds on your kind of grain, and then alfalfa and that kind of thing. And the animal price have gone up. Pork and beef have gone up because of the fertilizer. And uh, and the grain have gone up. The vegetable price have gone up. I don't know whether you notice in India. It's a global thing. That's why. Oh no, India prices have gone up like crazy. Exactly, um, same thing. It's a global thing. So that's the why hotel room. Know, my hotel, hotel room too, went uh, up by fifty percent. My Jesus. my air ticket from US to India went up by fifty percent. Five so zero. This is, this is why yesterday you the the the, the stock market took a big dive. Because uh, finally, Power, you know, the Federal Reserve Chairman, admitted it's a continuous phenomenon. This inflation is a continuous phenomenon. It's so serious, and the whole thing started. Almost, uh, uh, I would say, China is mainly responsible. They buy more on everything, because they are preparing for war, grain, energy, everything. They are stocking up. They are stocking up, and when China is stocking up. The price goes up. Absolutely. So I have a question regarding the submarine, the Chinese submarine. Yes. Where was the damage for that submarine? Was it on the top of the submarine or below? Where did that submarine get damaged? I don't think they have a photograph yet, but we have we have information that the submarine, you know, they they would do a thing like that. This is quite a good quite a strategy. To, uh, the Russian used to use it. The Soviet used to. Ram it. They use ramming. They know they cannot fight with you, but when you are so close to each other, you cannot shoot a missile because the the both both would be killed. So they use ramming. They use a lot of ramming, and the same thing. Remember, I was talking about the airplane that the uh, the Chinese fighter jet rammed the uh, P three, uh, P three uh, surveillance plane uh, on uh, near Hainan Island and forced. Right. Force the airplane to land in uh, in uh, Hainan Island. This kind of ramming, they know. In ramming, there is no such. Nobody knows how to deal with ramming. Right? They come from underneath. Ram. Same thing. Same Same te tactics they use with that submarine, I believe. So, um, was the American sonar unable to detect the uh, Chinese submarine? How could they, it? They could be lying. Underneath, doing nothing, merely, and because nuclear, they can shut down everything. All right, and when you pass over, they come up and ram you. So it's almost like hitting a mountain. That's what they call. 
you know, they don't do anything until you pass, and very close, they come up and ram you. And you don't know what to do because you don't wow. have anything shooting downwards. Mm. Very, very concerning. And I think the more important, more concerning message is how ready is India for a nuclear submarine led war? Because we're talking about the main strike weapon is changing from over the ground to under the sea and using nuclear submarine. So this is a question that uh, Indians need to ponder. And I'd, I'd, I'd expect the Prime Minister's office in India to issue some sort of a message on where India stands, because this is a big concern. Thank you very much, Elmer. And as always, my thanks to you for uh, you know wanting to share with us this latest update. So we will track this damaged Chinese submarine very closely. We'll bring you all that. We think that China, India also needs to have an AUKUS, like a nuclear submarine deal with the United States to upgrade its own nuclear submarine technology in a hurry. So I think that's what is the message here. Thank you once again very much. Uh, thank Elmer, you, thank you. We'll be back Thanks again. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.